My name is Dr. Aaron Carlisle. I'm a marine scientist at Stanford University. Since 2013, I've been working with a team of scientists from the University of Western Australia and the Zoological Society of London, tracking the movements of large pelagic animals, such as sharks and sailfish, in the British Indian Ocean Territory, the largest marine protected area in the world. Located in the Indian Ocean and spanning 640,000 square kilometers, the Marine Protected Area, or MPA, is larger than the size of France and was declared in 2010 in a partnership between the Bertarelli Foundation and the British government. While over 70% of the Earth is sea and ocean, less than 1% is fully protected. Research has shown that MPAs are vital in safeguarding the marine environment and protecting and rebuilding species abundance and diversity. Two of the scientists we're working with are David Koenig from the Zoological Society of London and David Tickler from the University of Western Australia. Chagos is an amazing place for us to conduct this kind of study because it's almost completely untouched by human influences. So the behaviours that we are seeing in the sharks out there are truly natural behaviours. Within the MPA, the Chagos Archipelago is a group of seven atolls made up of 58 individual tropical islands which support an abundance of remarkable wildlife. Chagos, in effect, for us becomes an enormous petri dish in which we can see how a huge natural reef system is going to respond to the big challenges of the 21st century. In March 2014, we traveled back to Chagos to continue our research, and we documented the expedition with handheld cameras. The main objective of the trip was to replace the batteries and download shark movement data from the 30 acoustic receivers we anchored to the seabed in 2013. These were placed in strategic locations around the reefs to detect and record shark movements. By studying these large apex predators, we are able to deduce important characteristics about the MPA and the health and biodiversity of the ocean. Chagos is subject to very strong weather systems and also can experience some quite powerful currents. So one of our biggest concerns was, are these receivers actually still there? Using GPS coordinates, we successfully recovered all 30 of the receivers, replaced their batteries, and secured them back on the seabed so they could monitor sharks for another year. The sharks themselves, 66 of them, were tagged internally with this, which is an acoustic transmitter. This sends out a series of pings that uniquely identify the animal. Over 12 months, the acoustic receivers will record and store every encounter with a shark. We get a record of every visit of that particular shark to that particular area. On this trip, we were able to tag 30 more sharks, bringing the total monitoring sample to almost 100 animals. We follow a strict code of ethics and welfare when carrying out the tagging in order to minimize any distress to the shark. It's obviously very important for an animal that lives in water that we keep water flowing over the shark's gills. We use a piece of perforated pipe that we place in the shark's mouth. We also cover their eyes to minimize stress on the animal. We want them to survive and thrive and give us the data back. So what we can see now on the screen is a list of all these unique tag IDs and each one of those tags is inserted within a shark so we can correlate these tags with individual sharks which we know the species, the sex and, and the size of and then we can work out on an individual case-by-case -case basis where these sharks are moving. So this guy, 27610, he spent his time on the east side of Perospanos moving up and down between the main channel and the two corners and if we bring up all the sharks at once this is really working to show us how the sharks are using the different parts of the reef. What do we think are the reasons why this northwest corner is so busy? Benara Shoals out here is a fantastic feature from a shark's point of view. It's a submerged reef where the tide sweeps back and forth yeah. daily. So they're clearly congregating out there to feed and then moving across to the main atoll to possibly find other sharks. We are now in the second year of data collection in Chagos and we've gathered over 130,000 individual shark detections. A huge wealth of information for us to now analyze. On this trip, 
Our capability to collect data was further increased by installing a new generation of acoustic receivers that send shark detection data directly via satellite. What it really gives us is an opportunity to research these animals whilst not being dependent on being on location. We can tag the animals and we can get data remotely for the next three, four, five years. Carrying out complementary research, we also attach satellite tags to yellowfin tuna, sailfish, and both silvertip and silky sharks. Acoustic tagging tells us an enormous amount about how sharks use the reefs that we're monitoring, but it can't tell us what the sharks do when they're away from the reefs. The satellite tags that we use allow us to track the animals wherever they go in the ocean. So this is a mini pat satellite tag, and what they do is record the location, the depth, and the ambient temperature around the shark. At the end of their deployment, usually about six to 12 months, it detaches from the shark, floats to the surface, and then sends the data back via satellites where we can then analyze and see where that shark's been. 139 fork. 139 fork. 129 pre cuddle. As with acoustic tagging, we follow strict welfare procedures when satellite tagging sharks. When we receive the data, we analyze the longitude and latitude and also the timings. And what we can create is these maps and tracks of where the animals have gone in time. So here we're looking at the tracks of the sharks fitted with satellite okay. tags in 2013. One is heading due north and it gets just to within the limit of the northernmost boundary of the reserve. And this animal here has gone, you know, 500 kilometers beyond the perimeter of the MPA. Yeah. So, you know, th these are reef associated sharks that are right out in the deep ocean, right out in midwater. And also they're out where the international fishing fleets are. So it raises questions about how we ought to be protecting a species like that in the Indian Ocean. To help answer questions like these, we will make regular trips back to Chagos to maintain the receivers, collect data, and continue tagging sharks. What we're doing now is planning a return trip later this year and early next year, where we can tag some more animals, but also go and download the data that's been collecting over the months in between the expeditions. When the project is complete in 2018, the research will show the extent to which the marine protected area is providing sanctuary to sharks and other large fish. All of this data contributes to the overall research question of what is the role of Chagos in the wider Indian Ocean. I'm very grateful to the Bedarelli Foundation and the Biden administration for giving us the chance to build on the science that's gone before. Chagos remains for me just the most exciting place. Oh wow, look at these guys go. I can't wait to get out there again. <laughs>